Hey everybody. So today we have kind of a leatherworking classic, the envelope wallet. Um, we designed up a quick pattern because I know um, shows and market seasons upon us and these sell really well. And so we had a few requests for it and I love the design. So pulled one out of the sketchbook and made a pattern. It's going to be in the description for a couple bucks. And this one is a full, it's not tucked or anything. It's all sewn, all glued, um, a nice single pocket. And the way that I do these is the snap is doesn't go all the way through. So you're protecting your cards from the snap hardware, which isn't a big deal, but it just makes things come in and out a little easier. So let's get to making it. We have some South Street leather from uh, Newbury Leathers. This is their wheat color, I believe, and I was wrong about, I thought it was a veg tan, it is chrome tan. Um, it does perform like a veg tan though, so we're gonna use this. It's a little thick, we'll do some skiving. I really like this color, and I think it's gonna look really nice with this Ritza. So let's get into it. I'm gonna mark the snap locations on the big piece. Uh, the snap location is on the on the small piece, but I'm not gonna mark it. I just put it there in case you want to, because I'm not gonna install the snap through all the layers. I'm just gonna do it on the top layer. So the leather I'm using is like four to five ounces, which is a little bit thick. You want to go about three ounces on this. So we're going to do a little skiving to slim down some of our borders here. So I'm going to skive that. And I'm going to skive this. have this skive down and then I went ahead and burnished this. Now um, I used the tokenol on this because it's chrome tanned. So tokenol uh, is easier, make it, it's easier to burnish with tokenol if you're using chrome tanned. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to line this up for our envelope detail here. And I'm just going to trace a very faint little line. There we go. And I'm going to rough this up and I'm going to install the snap and then put some glue on either side so we can glue everything together because these are our first two stitch lines. Now we're going to lay our first stitch lines. Um, you can go up, over, and around if you want. I just like going up both sides. This is such a small section that I just kind of leave it bare. So I'm going to lay my stitch line there. Lay my stitch line here. And then for these, I like to mark these out first. So I'm going to hang one prong over the edge, and that's going to be my first stitch hole. Mark that out, and then I usually do, I'm using five millimeter spacing, I usually do three more and go all the way down to the end. Of course, this is going to be different depending on what spacing you use, but if you're using five, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitching chisels, or nine, nine prong. Um, I usually do 12 stitch holes on each side because then I'm going to come down on this side and I'm going to end right here. I'm not going to stitch into this so now we can just punch this real quick and stitch these up. We're going to fold this up and glue it, but before we do that, I'm going to 
bevel and burnish our pocket top here. So once we have that all glued in and burnished the top there, we're going to mark where we're going to glue this together. So I'm using the lines on my cutting board. I'm going to fold this over and make sure that both these little tabs are on the same line here. And just make a little mark with my scratch all. And then we know to glue there and there. So I sanded down the sides, and now we're just going to run our last two stitch lines. I'm going to end a little bit before this because I don't want to intersect this. Now you can stitch straight up into that. I'm just, I like it better leaving a little bit of room myself, so that's how I'm going to do it. And again, we're going to mark our stitches here. And we want to be as close up to that as we can be without going cutting into it, so I think I should be able to pull that off. So you can see how when I pull this out, that hole, once we stitched it, we can just fold that back down. And I'm actually going to kind of do the same thing here. Just pull up that glue a tiny bit. Um, with this leather too, if you have any like little scuffs or anything, you use a heat gun or a lighter. Just heat it up. It'll bring oils to the top because it's a pull-up leather. And I don't think you ruin anything because you scuffed it. It's just marks up naturally and a little bit of heat brings out the marks. So now we're ready for our final edging and we got to install our snap and then we're done. So it's a very simple wallet, but it looks really, really pretty. You open it up, you have a couple cards in here. Holds three or four cards to start with, and you probably stretch it out to hold 10 or 12 by the time it breaks in. Um, this is the wheat color of the South Street Tannage. It'll be linked in the description. I really like this leather. It's a very cool color, um, and it goes well with this, uh, what is this cream, Fritza. Really nice combo there. Um, so that's going to be it. Pattern is the second link in the description. Materials are the first link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.